midterm elections heading into the final stretch, any Democratic slip up, any hint of a Democratic scandal could tip things in favor of Republicans. And earlier today, with this headline, at first glance, it looked like the Drudge Report had placed the president at the center of a sex scandal. It read, man warns president not to touch girlfriend. But when you clicked on the link, it took you to a video of the president voting early at his polling place in Chicago, where shortly after the president headed into his voting booth, an absolutely incredible scene unfolded. The boyfriend of the woman voting next to him walked past the president and jokingly said, don't touch my girlfriend. The following exchange is pretty incredible. <laughs> I really wasn't planning on it. <laughs> I am sorry. Please I know. <laughs> now there's, there's an example of a brother just, just embarrassing you for no reason. Just embarrassing. Just for no say, reason whatsoever. I knew he was going to say something smart, but you I didn't know. know what he was going to say. And now you'll be going back home and talking to your friends about that. <laughs> can't believe it. What's his name? Mike. I, I can't believe Mike. He is such a fool. <laughs> he really is. Well, I was just mortified. <laughs> She's Fortunately, having, she's having a conversation with the president. Fortunately, the president freaking, was nice about it. I'm freaking out right <laughs> and, now. You know, so it's all right. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Mike seems like a decent guy. He's, he's a decent guy. He's a decent guy. This is not happening. This really is. Hey, you, you're going to kiss him. Give him something to talk about. <laughs> Take care of him. Now you're going to that's easily the 15th time I've watched that. I could talk about the video all day and long. In fact, as my staff will tell you, I have. And joining me now are the couple at the center of it all, Aya Cooper and Michael Jones. All right, I love this video so much. Mike, can I start with you? What possessed you? Sure. What possessed you in that moment to, to make that joke? Uh, it was just so quiet in the room. And we walked in and everybody's eyes were glued to the president, as mine were too. Uh, it was a once in a lifetime type of thing. And as I walked to my booth, I saw her there frantically trying not to panic. <laughs> and I, I had to say something. I had to say something that would make just, just ease the situation. All you heard were camera going, cameras going off. So I had to go ahead and say something, that's all. I, you, can I just say this? I completely understand that because I've been at a few events with the president and I have that same urge. In fact, I've said a few things which I've then reported to my wife, which she was like, that's right on the border of whether you can say that to the president. <laughs> so I actually was like texting her I saw this. I was like, well, that's, if you can get away with that, a, uh, um, what, what was your response? <laughs> Why? Like, <laughs> why? Why? Why would you do this? And I, I was just nervous, super nervous. And I couldn't believe that he said that. And another part of me was just like, shut up. They're going to tackle you. <laughs> shut up. So just a lot. Ball of nerves, ball of nerves. <laughs> there, there was something kind of amazingly gracious in the in the way the president then played 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 that out and kind of like took your mm -hmm. nervousness away from you to basically reassure you that it was yeah. okay and the whole thing wasn't the mortifying yeah. nightmare that you possibly thought it was for a second. Right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so have you been have you now been like telling all your friends exactly the conversation that the president mapped out for you in that interaction? Yeah, friends and family have pretty much reached out. Uh, everyone saw it on the local news, and it's just been uh, pretty interesting the last few days. Uh, I mean, it was just an experience I wanted to give her. I knew she was, you know, just nervous going up there uh, in the booth next to him that she probably wasn't even paying attention to her ballot. But, I mean, I, it, it wasn't <laughs> anything that the president did. I want to make that clear. Uh, it was just something that I always do to her. She knows very well it's my personality. <laughs> I am very spontaneous, and I will just put her out in the front street of anyone in order to make her smile and laugh just like she did. So, Hey, did you, were you actually able to focus on voting on the ballot? Oh, I was trying. I was trying really hard. I actually did. I mean, I did see who I wanted to vote for, and I did vote for that person, but... After he said that, I was just like, oh, my God, please, just Secret Service, don't take him out. Just don't. <laughs> please don't. And then standing next to the president, and he's sitting up here actually having a conversation. I'm like, this is surreal. This cannot be happening right now. So it was just a great experience. It really was. I, I, I will say, for, in, in Mike's defense, as he noted, you, are, you then did have a conversation with the president that would not have happened had he not made the joke. Mm -hmm. Very true. All right, Correct. final question, you guys. In new, there's been some news reports that say you're, you're engaged. Is that true or not? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, not yet. Okay, not okay. Yet I didn't mean to put you on front street, but I, I just had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Not a problem. <laughs> Air Cooper and Michael Jones, thank you very much. Thanks thank for having you. us. Thank <laughs> you. All right. Breaking news to report tonight, as I mentioned at the top, Bren Bradley, the former editor of the Washington Post who led the paper's Watergate coverage, published the Pentagon Papers, has died. He was 93. More on that ahead.